These diesel powered heaters from Canada to here, when we were looking around for a solution for hot air technology for our overland show vehicle, we decided to go with ProHeat. Todd's gonna actually come over here and talk to us exactly why we would wanna pick ProHeat, what the ProHeat does, what it doesn't do, what vehicles it's good for, and then we're gonna take a little tour around the new Nomadic Cooling Show Truck that is gonna be decked out over the next year, and how we're gonna design the ProHeat inside the vehicle, not only to heat the cabin bays, but the cabin, the engine, hot water as well within the vehicle. This machine does all of that and more. Let's go further, let's talk to Todd and learn a little bit about this piece of equipment. Now Todd and I met in Vegas a few months back at the, the Mining Expo. That's right. The Mining Expo, we went to a fantastic dinner. Now as you guys know, I am the self-proclaimed van genius, but you also know I can barely read, so I haven't read any of the install manuals or any of the literature regarding this product. I like to learn everything on YouTube. So thank you Todd and ProHeat for uh, coming out here today, Absolutely. talking to us about this product what it does, what makes it different from the competition, and why customers would want this instead of other things that are out there available. So this is the X30, obviously. Uh, this is one of our smallest heaters. It actually is the smallest heater that ProHeat puts out. Um, there's a lot of great features for this heater. This heater runs on an O2 sensor. F air to fuel ratio is constant all the time. It never smokes. Uh, this heater also has a variable output. It will do anywhere from 15 to 31,000 uh, BTU, depending on what the heat load is of, of uh, whatever the application is that you're, you have it in. PWMs all of its motors on this heater, so we don't care what voltage the heater goes on. It can go on a 12 volt. It can go on a 24 volt system it doesn't matter for the heater right once it's plugged in it will automatically sense that it does 48 voltage. volts i'm sorry it'll do 48 it won't do 48 volts okay no but it will do either 12 or 24 right now the big thing is uh it's air to fuel ratio with the oxygen sensor because of that we can go into higher altitudes without any issues there are no adjustments that need to be made to the heater so because it runs on an oxygen sensor and an egt sensor it runs air to fuel ratio is a constant we run about five percent because of that that's a big downfall for uh diesel fired heaters right because they start they stop they start to coke up internally and the maintenance is increased especially when you get into altitude this heater doesn't have that issue so we can go because of the air fuel ratio we can go about two years without doing a full maintenance on this heater this heater should never smoke it will run a constant clean burn inside of the heater at all times and and that uh, decreases your maintenance on the heater itself everything on this heater is uh, serviceable cleanable you don't have to replace a bunch of big uh, pieces on this heater and so for a maintenance about a two-year maintenance the only thing really required of it is to pull the head off clean maybe a little bit of debris out of the combustion chamber the fuel filter comes out it's a stainless steel filter so all you have to do is clean it you don't have to replace it there's an air filter on top of this heater you might pull out and blow out you could replace it if needed but that is pretty much it very simple very quick very cost effective so on this heater itself i can pull out one two three four bolts in this entire head comes off of the heater. You can see the combustion tube inside. All the working uh, mechanics are in your hand at that point. You do have to unhook four connectors right here, but that, that's simple and easy. You just pull that out. You can pull the combustion tube out, wire brush it real quick, get some of the uh, you know debris. Uh, diesel, when it burns, it, it, it will give a little bit of debris internally. But for the most part, that's it. Like I said, just an air filter clean the fuel filter and you're off and running so we can we can without a doubt heat water with this um i i've put these i've put these heaters in hershey's tanker trucks right to keep the chocolate hot <laughs> um i've put them in many many different applications we can heat def tanks fuel tanks anything that has hydronics we can pretty much heat it i believe this is the only one on the market that i'm aware of that varies its output from 15,000 to 31,000 BTU. So if you don't need the heat load, 
the heater will idle itself down. It won't as, use as much fuel. It won't use as much uh, battery consumption and it won't give you as much heat. If you do need the heat, it will idle itself back up. It'll go up to 31,000 BTU and heat whatever it is you, you need. Coolant heat exchangers, probes, engines, water, floors, hanging heat exchangers and trailers. You name it, we can do it. Then I go up, and then I go down. Then I go back up again. And I've got lumbar support as well. It's air powered. Yeah. That's not electric. That's old fashioned air. Oh. Basically, this whole thing. This is where we're gonna put the Pro Heat X30 in our F750 overland vehicle. We're putting it right here so that when we're at expos, all we have to do is open it up. It'll sit right in here on display. At home, you can mount it under the vehicle so you, you don't actually see it or take up any of your cabin room. This is just one of the options that we're gonna use. Our heater is, is really, really sealed tightly. All of our connectors are triple seal FCI connectors. They can, they can shed water and corrosion very nicely. The entire heater is sealed up tight, so if we needed to, we could go underneath. We have a no drill frame mount. It just clamps right onto the, uh, onto the frame probably 15 minute install we can hang the heater i did an install in canada on a semi i took the heater and put it i bolted it to the bottom of a semi cab uh about i don't know i could stick my hand between the drive shaft and the heater and it's still up there running it will do up to six zones meaning that it will heat six different items Say in a boat, for example, you have a cabin, you have a restroom or a bathroom, a head, whatever you want to call, uh, and then a bedroom. We can zone each one of those with our heater. A thermostat will tell the heater to come on. It will heat your bedroom, and it will also have another thermostat. It will come on and heat this particular room, whatever it is. We could do up to six zones Stop it. with that heater. Really? Right? So the reason why I ask is you can... You can actually thermostat these cabinets with a heat exchanger inside of them. And if you have electronics or you have something inside of here, you can keep this cabin warm. You can also keep this cabin warm. If you want this one warmer than this one, you just set the thermostat on it and the heater will take over. Is that a second? Is that like an additional component to the Pro Heat? <laughs> it's just a thermostat that runs on a CAN network for the heater that operates a heat exchanger that's in these compartments. I want that. Absolutely. Oh, doesn't everybody. I didn't, Kenny, I didn't know we did that. <laughs> if you wanted to heat the fuel tank or the DEF tank, you could put a small probe in there to keep that warm. DEF tanks are notorious for freezing in the winter time, right? You don't have that issue any longer. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to my original title of this video, the yeah. best heater on the market <laughs> today. There is not another heater that does all of these things. So installation on this particular vehicle be quite easy. There's a spare bung inside of the fuel tank right here that's, uh, that's plugged up right now. Uh, uh, our fuel probe goes inside of that. Uh, you, 10 minute job, right? 10 minutes, you put the fuel probe in, you run the line all the way back to the heater and you have fuel. You got power ground that comes off of the main system. You can just connect to the battery. Very simple and easy. Then you have a switch harness that would run to your PFC that we talked about before. Uh, a switch harness on a CAN network. It's an absolute plug and play system. You plug up three different wires that's in a harness. Boom, you're done. The heater is rocking ready, ready to turn on. The PFC has several different options that go with this PFC. One of the best things about our PFC is it's also used as a diagnostic tool. So if there's ever any issues with the heater itself, you can hook up to the PFC with a uh, USB stick, plug it into the backside of it. You can download all the data off of the heater itself onto a USB stick, send it to one of our technicians, um, either myself or uh, a technician in Vancouver, we can diagnose the heater pretty much online, give you an idea what's wrong with it, and move on.
Okay, their company can't do that because our air conditioners don't do that, Kenny. And if he can do that and our air conditioners can't, then we look real bad. In the winter time, you can program the PFC uh, to come on any time during the day. Uh, I think, uh, let's see, five events a day, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so you could turn it on at six o'clock in the morning, noon, three, whatever the case may be. School buses are big at that. The heater will automatically fire up. It'll heat the engine up. And when you come out in the morning, everything's warm, ready to go. No downtime. You don't have to start the engine and, and run it and idle it and whatever. Uh, you just get in the vehicle and go. Very big benefit for this. Pay attention to this, guys. These are designed for city buses in high altitude in Colorado to work all day, every day. They cannot quit. They cannot break down. These things, you can't overuse the thing. Exactly. Okay, if you want it hot every time when you walk out to your vehicle, this thing will do that. All right, guys, once again, I'm Jonathan with Nomadic Cooling. This is Todd with Pro Heat. We do want to thank Todd for coming out to Nomadic Cooling today in Glendale, Arizona. Uh, let me be honest with you, he didn't want to be here, but I think he did a fantastic job uh, in front of the camera today. I can't wait to do install videos with the Pro Heat X30 in our Nomadic Cooling Show Rig F750. And if you have any questions about the Pro Heat system, do me a favor, give us a call over here at Nomadic Cooling or give Todd a call over at Pro Heat. Absolutely. If you have any questions about going hotter, further in comfort, there you go. give Nomadic Cooling a call today.